In this video, I want to talk about books that I use on clinical placement and for OSCE preparation. So far in my third year of med school, I have been on placement for a few months now. My placement days usually start at around 8am and then end at around 4 to 5pm, during which you can find moments where you're waiting for doctors to finish things up, or you're waiting around for a surgery to start, or you're sitting in the break room, or you find yourself having a longer lunch break. In these moments, you have the time which you can use to have a break from the things that you're doing on clinical placement, but also you can use this time to read up on various different things that you see whilst on placement. I can't stress this enough, but when you're on clinical placement, you need to be reading up and studying about the things that are relevant to your placement. Otherwise, when you're sitting there in the doctor's office or standing there in theatres, you will have no idea what is going on and you will be severely wasting your time. These books have also saved me from looking like a complete moron when the consultants start to grill you on your clinical and preclinical knowledge. There have been times where I was reading up on a condition or signs on examination and then I would go to see a patient who had exactly what I was reading about and I was able to report it back to the consultant properly. On the other hand, there have also been times where I knew it was in the book, but I didn't read it. And then I got utterly destroyed for not knowing whatever it was that I should have known. And trust me, that is painful to sit through. The first book I want to talk about is the OSCE Revision Guide for Medical Students. It is pretty much the biggest godsend that I have for learning all the clinical skills that I need for my exams in third year and of course to use on placement. There are so many things that this book has and I want to make sure that I cover everything. So I'm going to break it down as succinctly as I can. Starting with history taking, this book has a step-by-step -step process for almost all the histories that you'll need to do in med school. From the more general ones like cardiorespiratory and abdo GI to the more specialized ones like psychiatric, alcoholic and pediatric. It has tables and lists of symptoms that are common for a variety of different conditions and teaches you how to present these histories back to your supervisors and examiners in a proper manner. Similarly, examinations are presented to you in much the same way. Step-by-step -step process for general and special exams and telling you how to present your findings when you are done. They also include a lot of different pictures of the clinical signs that are mentioned and that you should be looking out for when examining a person so that you can actually tell if a person has it or not. For some specific conditions which can have very different types such as COPD and heart failure, there are dedicated pages going through the anatomy, causes, clinical features, investigations and treatments. The reason for this is that in OSCEs there can be specific stations where a person has a clear disease and you will need to be able to recognise the specific clinical skills and knowledge for it. And when on clinical placement, it's pretty good being able to show off these as the specific conditions are quite common to see on the wards. Next chapter is focusing directly on acute presentations and management of conditions. This is where things like A2E assessment and basic life support fall, but also when symptoms suddenly start like sudden chest pain and shortness of breath and emergency situations like anaphylaxis and stab wounds. More likely than not, the things that present acutely tend to be more serious and will need different examinations, investigations and a different series of questions. Moving on, this book has a chapter on interpretations of different investigations like spirometry, x-rays and CT images as well as blood tests and urinalysis, telling you what you should be looking out for, what readings support a diagnosis and what red flags you should also be looking out for. The penultimate chapter is all about prescribing, from nutrition to drugs calculations you need for dosages, indications, contraindications, side effects, mechanisms, and risk factors. It has lists of common drugs that are taken by the community, like antihypertensives, antidepressants, and analgesics. Taking a look at antibiotics in particular, it gives you a breakdown of what bacteria are gram-positive and gram-negative, what shape they are, if they have a cell wall or not, and what diseases they cause, which sets up the foundation for what antibiotics you need to prescribe a patient. Lastly, but probably most importantly, it has a section on communication skills and what you need to mention for specific conversations that you may have with a patient, like when consenting for surgery 
or what to say when someone asks for contraceptives. Obviously, when actually talking to a patient, you don't want to sound like you're reading from a list, but having these structures to follow just makes it so much easier to feel confident that you're not missing anything glaringly important. I've spent a lot of time talking about this book, but this book is so dense with useful information presented in such a nice way, I had to talk about all of it. When you're on clinical placement, this is the best place to practice all of the things in this book, and being able to confidently do these things gives you the comfort and reassurance that you're making the most out of your time in hospital and acting as a real asset towards the staff working there. The main book that I physically use in hospitals is the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. This book is basically a savior whilst I'm on placement, as this pretty much has the essentials to everything that I will see on any of my placements even on the placement where I was on a specific specialty. It's got all the basics of history taking and examinations, as well as investigations and interpretations. But the part which I find the most useful are the different diseases that they have pages on. It has almost all the common and quite a lot of the uncommon diseases that you would physically see on clinical placement. This book has been really good when I've been asked to go see a patient with a particular disease, and I can't quite remember everything about it, or the disease has a lot of various different presentations. I'm able to quickly go to my bag, grab the book, refresh myself on the fundamentals of it, and be able much more confidently to go and see the patient and ask the relevant questions and be able to feed back to my consultants much more effectively. I also want to touch on the physical construction of this book, which is something I thought I'd never say in my life. The cover is made of this really nice water resistant material and is really flexible and small, so it can fit easily into my pocket where I'm wearing scrubs. It also has three fabric tassels physically attached to the book, which act as really useful bookmarks for when you're on placement in a specific specialty, and there are certain diseases which you end up seeing more frequently that you want to refresh yourself on. Last thing I want to mention is that right at the start of the book, it has reference values for all the lab tests that you could order, which is amazingly useful when starting off clinical placement, when you're presented with some numbers from a lab test and ask to comment on it. At the start of placement, I didn't know any reference values off by heart, and being honest, I don't really need to, because online systems do tell you. But in the situations where you're verbally discussing a case, being able to know these reference values is a good way to show to your consultants that you're actually a keen medical student. The next book is what I deem to be the sister book to the Clinical Medicine Handbook, and that's the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Specialties. I'm not going to say much because it is a very similar book in terms of content and functionality to the Clinical Medicine Handbook, but this time for some of the other specialties that you may see in medicine and on clinical placement like OBS and gynae, paediatrics, ENT, dermatology, and ophthalmology. The last book that I'm going to talk about and recommend is the Top 100 Drugs book. This book is basically my short and fast way of learning about all of the drugs that are prescribed and used in medical practice. This book is designed for students, so it has a really nice and concise structure which makes learning from this book, as well as referencing from this book, really easy. Each drug class is split into two sections, the clinical pharmacology side and the practical prescribing side. The clinical pharmacology side includes common indications for what this drug is used for, a small section on the mechanism for these drugs, and then finally, common side effects, possible harmful effects, warnings, and big red flags when using the drug, as well as any interactions it can have with other drugs and parts of the body. The practical prescribing side has information on dosages, how the drug should be given, how patients with this drug should be monitored, and then finally a bit about how to talk to the patient when you are giving them this drug. This part includes how to manage patient expectations and how to talk to them about the risks and benefits. It is a nice and concise little book which sits at the bottom of my bag so I can always refresh myself whenever I am on placement. Right, this brings me to the end of my video. If you want to get any of the books that I've mentioned in this video, I'll leave a link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.